What's up friends? Back in my office today and I'm going to start by answering a question that was posted in the comments area on one of my recent YouTube videos. Uh, our friend goes on to say, Elliot, how would you recommend I soften the blow of I'm leaving university to live at a Buddhist retreat for three to six months to Christian parents who are under a significant amount of stress already. He goes on to say that this is something I have to do at some point in my life and as time goes on the urge to tear myself out of the expected manner of living is only building. My mom cried at the thought of me doing this for less than a week during the summer, so I stayed put. But life is far too short to waste these opportunities. Damn right it is, man. And just because your mommy's crying doesn't mean that you've got to stay attached to the apron strings. Your mom's supposed to cry. That's what mommies do when big boys grow up. Right? So, but I get it, you know, we love our moms, but there is a deep primordial psychological need, particularly for men. This is, this is the case for girls and boys, men and women, um, but the difference, that the, 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 the extra challenge that men have to deal with is quite different than women. And what I'm talking about is separating from the parents, right? Um, at some point, the ego develops and the baby recognizes that he is not his mom. If you study infant uh, psychological development, you, you realize that there's a stage when the human being is steeped in the sea of oneness and the infant doesn't know the difference between himself and his mom or herself and her mom. This is all very well documented, normal, natural, makes sense. The ego hasn't developed yet. But at some point, both the little girl and the little boy need to separate themselves or recognize the separation between themselves and their moms. This is normal, natural ego development. But unlike the little girl who only has to separate f from her mom as a, an individual, a freestanding human being as opposed to a oneness with the mother, the little boy has to break the sexual bonds that he has with his mother. And in other words, he has to recognize the contrast between his sexuality and his mom's sexuality. In order to do so, there is a deep need, a deep psychological need, primordial, something that our ancestors understood, and that's why they had rites of passages for, for young men, where the boy has to differentiate sexually from his mother, and in order to, to facilitate that process, he has to create contrast, and then he needs something to follow, right? He needs uh, other men to show him like that, what, what it is to be a man. Mom can't really do that, you know, unfortunately, and we'd like to be as idealistic as possible, but that's not the case. Biology reigns over ideology every day. So your desire to break away from your mommy and the desire to establish yourself as an independent, free-thinking individual in contrast, really that's what you're doing, to your parents and your heritage is normal, it's natural, it's supposed to happen so that the world evolves, otherwise we'd be steeped in superstition, dogma, and never really enlighten. We'd never grow. So uh, I want to acknowledge your desire to do so, and I also want to give a, a quick warning to any of you who will find yourself in a similar situation. Yes, you need to create contrast. Yes, it's unfortunate that the world doesn't provide ritual initiation for young men, but your parents, uh, the religion, and your mom in particular don't deserve resent or disdain that often comes uh, that, that's associated with creating that contrast and trying to stand on your own. I remember when I was uh, much younger, not that much younger, um, the amount of disdain that I had towards my parents for the ideas that they taught me, the, uh, the experiences that they, um, that they, they steeped me in, but because they were doing the best that they knew how. Our parents always do the best that they know how with the information that was provided for them at that time. I don't know how old your parents are, but my parents grew up before there was an internet. So they had to take many things at face value because that's all they knew. They knew what the TV said, what the newspaper said, and what the president said when he addressed them, uh, addressed the nation on the radio or whatever, depending on how old your parents are. So they only know what they know because of the information that was available to them. You and I, bro, we live in a brand new day and age where information is not only plentiful, but it's fucking confusing. And that's why you need core values. And your parents may have even provided you with some core values, one of which is your religion, your link to religion, Christianity. 
in your desire to move beyond Christianity, in your desire to create contrast between you and your parents, in your desire to grow up and wipe mommy's tears so that you can be a big boy, you've uh, decided to explore Buddhism. I took your question because I was in a very similar situation. Um, my parents raised me as a Catholic, but my parents were never very religious. Uh, never really pressed us with it. But they introduced the idea that there is a higher power, that there is some transcendent other that's beyond just me, that's just beyond just us, that is um, interpersonal and ever present. You know, science has names for this also, but in religion they called it God. And it, it, it intrigued me. Hmm. All the ideas about a God really intrigued me. Uh, in college, I created contrast with my parents by actually becoming Christian. At one point in college, I had some friends who were really into Christianity, and I was like, boy, that, looks, that sounds like a good idea. That sounds like some pretty cool stuff. I'm going to study some books that are going to teach me a little bit about the mysteries of the universe, and so on and so forth. So I was able to get the ball rolling, but ultimately, it didn't jive well with me where I was at that time in my life. And ultimately, I began studying various forms of spirituality, as you're doing right now. And Buddhism... Happen to, happens to be a pretty fascinating one. It happens to be very resourceful in, its, in many of the practices. And, uh, and if your parents are truly God-fearing or God-seeking or spiritual people, Christian in particular, they'll recognize various uh, suggestions, even by Jesus, where he says, look, Sometimes you've got to leave your parents and come follow me. Sometimes you've got to grow the fuck up and let the dead bury the dead and come follow me. Sometimes you're going to have to sell all of your shit. He says this at some point. You're going to have to sell all your stuff. He says it to the rich man. Sell all your shit and come follow me. Basically, he's saying in various different ways, you're going to have to fucking die and be born again. You're going to have to die to your old self, meaning your parents. You're going to have to die to your old be belongings and sense of being, meaning your wealth or your even your ego, your character, who you think you are. Break down completely, dissolve, be born again so that you can be born again in Christ, in Christ consciousness. Do you understand? Now, your parents raised you in a form of consciousness that they label as Christ consciousness, but it's not fulfilling enough for you. That's totally understandable. Not only are you creating contrast, but you're reaching now. And you can thank your parents for the impetus, for the inspiration to reach, to reach for God. And you're finding that Buddhism is allowing you that to happen. And there are those... You know, we're talking about softening a blow to your parents. They're not going to... Look, this might soften a blow or not, but it doesn't matter. You're going to have to grow up anyway, and mommy's going to cry. That's just the way shit is. But um, if your parents are thinking people, open, available, creative, intuitive people, they might be able to accept the idea that perhaps... You know, I've heard this before. In fact, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of a, a religious... Slut, like I kind of, I, I, I bounce around. I don't get tied to too many things. And for many years, I was a Baha'i. You know, familiar with the Baha'i faith? It's also an Abrahamic religion, similar to Christianity. And one of the tenets of the Baha'i faith is that there has been progressive realization of the celestial ideas that birth consciousness in humankind. And Jesus just happens to be one in a long succession of many, and many that will continue to come. And Buddha and Jesus, many people believe, and there's been uh, tons of uh, investigation into the relationship, both consciously and physically, between the teachings of Jesus and the teaching in Bo of Buddha. There's, in fact, a book, I believe, called Jesus the Buddha, that you might want to might read and invest in. And look, another Baha'i idea that I, I took to during my stages in that in that in that stage was that when a child or an individual a person like yourself grows in consciousness regardless of what your parents grandparents or ancestors have may have said or done your level of consciousness offers retrospect retrospective blessings to your ancestry 
In fact, it's believed that they gifted you with the inquiring heart to keep seeking your enlightenment or your salvation. See, there's just different language to describe the same shit. Christians might say salvation. Buddhists might say enlightenment, but it's an awakening. That if you awaken, my friend, which you are, we're all awake. We're in the age of, of tremendous awakening. I don't know if we all realize this or not, but because of the internet, information is that much more actively available for us. I think kind of where we're stumbling is the, um, we're not in the age of actually doing yet. You know, a lot of you guys I know watch these videos haven't done shit yet. That's normal, natural, because you're absorbing, but um, we're, we're going to move into the age of actually doing this shit. I think we're getting close. Evolution is rapid. Anyway, my point here is that it is your responsibility to die to your old self, to die to the younger, immature version of yourself that needs mommy's approval. And it is very responsible of you to be seeking higher thoughts and ways of being such that you can reach enlightenment. When I say reaching enlightenment, it's not a destination. It's a process of becoming a stronger version of you. So, my man, you can do the good work of empowering other people, including perhaps your mommy, daddy, grandparents, and seven generations of ancestors. Keep growing stronger. Keeps bright, uh, keep shining your light. <laughs> Done.